Our system, I promise you, everyone here is going to miss it. You're all going to miss it if you don't believe it's that simple. It really is this simple. It boils down to three questions. Number one, what is the action we want them to take, both the macro and the micro? We always have to keep the end goal in mind. Is there anybody here who likes to be sold? But how many of you, if I gave you Jeffrey's credit card and said, go have some fun, could find a way to spend some money? Why? Because we all love to buy. Okay? We just hate being sold. We hate being pushed into doing anything. But if we're pulled into what we want, we're happy. And we talked about technology changing, but basic people's motivations, their needs. How many people here have heard of Maslow before? How many people think that's really changed in the last 10 years? No, our basic core needs, right? They've evolved what we want, but the needs and the desires for it have not changed. It's what I started talking about today when I talked about hypocrisy. Okay, it's not the fact that you're a hypocrite. I'm not accusing anybody in this room of being a hypocrite. Okay, but if you really, really, really want to be customer focused, it's a much bigger commitment. It's much more than how you feel and what you think and what you want and what you tell your employees. Okay, it's a total concentration on doing it. I'm not going to walk a mile in your shoes. I'm not going to live in your skin. Okay, and I'm not going to be part of your family, and I'm not going to be in your work environment, and I'm not going to have your stupid boss, okay, or your wonderful boss. I'm not going to be able to understand you directly. That's a really big problem. Okay, because if I need to motivate you to do something, I need to understand where you're coming from. People don't cause defects, systems do. That really resonates. I'm not sure he was talking about exactly what we're talking about. Okay, but I'm going to show you that it's not the people who navigate your site who don't know what to do. But they talked about this very simple concept. And if you think about this also in terms of uh, if you've ever had a blind date, this will make a lot of sense. <laughs> if you think about the top being us, our business, our customers, our personal selves, and the, the side here on the left being our customers or our significant other or the person we're dating, whatever it is, there's an area that it, what we call open. They see what you're wearing, I see what you're wearing, it's pretty obvious, no questions about that. Then maybe as you're eating, right, you order a beautiful spinach salad and eating it and all of a sudden you get one of those pieces of spinach in your teeth, right, ever happened to you, right? Or maybe you have a big L on your forehead, whatever it is. Um, there's an area naturally that we're blind about. Right? How many people think they're not blind about their own businesses? Good, well, at least we're all realistic about that. Our job, if you think about this as window panes, is to get this hidden area and open it up. Just drop it down so there's just a little bit of hidden stuff, because they don't need to know everything, but they certainly need to know a lot more than they know today. It's why we go online. Why isn't your product flying off the shelf so quickly that you can't keep up? Why? Actually, it's more than that. It's more than that. It's, it, it, it's harder than that, okay? Because if it was just you had to tell them what to do, this would be a marketing seminar like any other. That wouldn't have done it. It wasn't what you were asking for, okay? It was the information that remained hidden. It was what you knew about how good you are, okay, that the other party didn't know. Okay, so two things with that. Number one, um, if you look at, let's say, Google AdWords, and they did some eye, eye tracking studies and stuff, people are six times, six or seven times more likely to click on an organic result than a paid result. I remember a time when most people used to only type in one word searches. Then all of a sudden it went to two word searches. Now we're up to three and four word searches. How many people can really explain the true nature of their problem in just one or two words. Because as Roy says, you have to talk to the dog in the language of the dog about what's in the heart of the dog. What scent do we want to put on our site for people to keep clicking? We want to use meat. Each hyperlink needs to be a little piece of meat that's going to keep bringing them closer and closer to their task. Now, how do I know this? Well, let's look at a little bit of research. Krishna Bharat, senior research scientist at Google. Which one of those first three 
fits when you have to buy a beer at a ball game. Customer intimate? Yeah, that guy who's go going down the thing with a little tray of beers, he's your best buddy, right? <laughs> he sits down with you, he has a cold one, then he, keeps then he does the same with the next guy? No, there's another place, and this is a very common one today because it's actually bigger than, than just this. It's called path dominance, and it has to do with distribution. And so what Budweiser was talking about, and we love this language, is they're now in all the different bars, okay? They are doing this all across the country. They're going into the bars, and they're having their representatives, not salespeople, they don't sell anything, go in and introduce the microbrews and spend some time working in the bars because what they realized is, this is their words, they forgot how to sell small. They forgot how to sell small. They lost touch with the idea that this wasn't a mass market. That in the bar, it wasn't about four or five percentage points of market. It was about an individual preference. Dog diarrhea, huge selection of dog diarrhea, low prices, cheap shipping, secure. <laughs> this is called a lazy marketer. And what happens on your website is people are looking to get around, but they're following their own cow paths. And we look at it because did you spend the time planning every link, where it was going to lead to, and how people were going to get to different places from beginning to end? No. Because what we've done is thought of pages, because that's our old reference model. We think of it as books. A page presentation is very different than an online presentation, which is all about the links. If embedded links are done well, they will engage the user effectively as they browse within the active window. And we'll talk about that when we talk about, when we talk about eye tracking. People are focused into the center of the screen, into the content. They're not focusing anywhere else but on the content. They're looking for what's relevant to them. The second type of hyperlink, and this is what's so different about online, okay, is what we call points of resolution. They take you to resolution pages. Why? I've got a question. I want it answered. I am involved in my buying process, not your sales process. Can you please help me answer my questions first? And the question is, what is it that they don't get? What is this? B to B, B to C, I have a complex sale. That's all bullshit. And I remember, as I was thinking about this, I even called up Roy. I said, Roy, you know, I'm thinking about this. We have this, this, that. What do you think? Until I finally figured out, it took us a couple of days, and we figured out that there were four things that made a sale complex. The reason you need to understand complexity, okay, is because like topology, okay, it limits your area of play. If you understand what kind of business you are, if you understand how complex of a decision you have, you know that there are certain things you don't need to do, all right? It's sort of like you know that you don't need snow tires if you live in Arizona. We need personas because we need to be able to empathize with our customers. Because again, it's hard thinking about 50,000 visitors. But it's a lot easier to, to think about uh, Jean Hunt and her challenges on your website or, or Doug Burton's challenges on your website than it is to think about all your visitors. This is where we're going to keep things really simple for you. In the whole universe, no matter what your demographics tell you, no matter everything else, people are more identical than they are unique. And there are only 12 types of buyers, period. 12. Here they are. And their site went from a 0 0.86 conversion to a 54.1% conversion. The only difference is we identified their five personas. We planned out their keywords and their content based on it. For each one of these, you also need to understand another goal. Are you understanding why this is becoming a little bit more complex? I'm starting to keep adding levels of complexity to understanding a person. It's not just about understanding parts of them. We need to look at this whole thing in order to make up a persona. The other thing is that as a society, we like to set up binary tests, A-B tests, right? Very common online, okay? Where what we're offering is, do you like this or that better? The most famous binary test in marketing was when Coca-Cola asked people, what do you like better, new Coke or Pepsi? 
And people told them. Everybody told them they liked New Coke better. They went ahead. They changed Coke. They almost lost their company. 